my agenda, I just want to get an overview and yeah, follow this one, uh, these things. Tanzania, as um, Matogore has already mentioned many things about it. Um, okay, I've, I've counted manually yesterday. Uh, we have, no, uh, that was the list of uh, providers seen that, are, that I call internet providers, um, not other organizations that have an ASN and are visible, uh, visible globally. There are about 37 uh, and with uh, 63 members of AFRIC, Tanzania is the sixth biggest country in, in that statistic. So with the sixth most number of members of AFRIC. And if you count the ASNs, we have 77 and that makes us the fourth biggest uh, within the AFRIC service region. And Tanzania has an area of about 947,000 kilo square kilometers and about 50,000, oh, sorry, 50 million uh, inhabitants. These are, um, well, this one and the, and the GDP per capita of 1,006 US dollars uh, statistics from uh, two years ago. And as you see on the map, it borders quite a number of other countries. Um, and poses uh, its own uh, opportunities for connectivity for the other countries. So until 2009, when the SICOM cable landed, all communications uh, with Tanzania were via VSAT. That was telephone as well as um, uh, internet services. And we had several providers offering VSAT services and Bidirectional services transmitting and receiving on the same location were allowed. And many enterprises had their own visa terminal, which uh, gave them more independence, more reliability. And that was, of course, through a licensed provider, but their own installation. So it made them independent of um, failures uh, in the surrounding areas of network connectivity but it also meant they were not directly connected to the other places in Tanzania. So there were many islands and these islands were connected to Europe. Norway was a very popular uh, gateway provider there then. So when we started peering in Tanzania, we had initially on the VSATs, the, the ISPs connected, but some of their customers that were on VSATs, they were not uh, directly connected to the internet exchange, for instance. So this is, for instance, something I want to mention that is very different from our neighbor Kenya, because in Kenya, the bidirectional satellite services were not allowed or not licensed. There was only one jumbo net provider that could send traffic outside up to the sky. And because of that, they had um, a need for national backhaul services, and um, they had to make it work to have connectivity between the cities. And that gave probably a better uh, environment for peering all the traffic locally because there was a way between all those uh, cities and towns. So the national backhaul in Tanzania, it was existing, but it was not used and it was priced very, very high. Back then. So when SECOM came in, was it July? I think it was July 2009. Um, this all changed. We had suddenly, uh, instead of 600 milliseconds, no, sorry, 1,200, two, two satellite hops, uh, a latency to somewhere in Kenya, we had now 300 milliseconds, so only a quarter, because even through going through Europe, on the submarine cables was much faster than going through satellite, even if the satellite was only one hop. So one year later, Easy came, and from then on, we had two uh, submarine cables uh, landing in Tanzania. Um, and because a uh, lot uh, higher capacity was available suddenly at, at cheaper rates, uh, the national backhaul infrastructure had to be improved so that not just 
Basalum got benefit from those uh, new installations and the national ICT backbone was uh, created and it became operational around the same time and replaced uh, many visa services that were um, used outside of Diasalam and also inside Diasalam and we got um, basically connectivity through fiber everywhere. So a typical subscriptions even of enterprises uh, to ISP services, they went from a few hundred kilobits to several megabits back in 2009. So ISPs had to upgrade their backhauls and um, because the internet gateways were no longer isolated, more traffic was passing through the SLM and I believe it also helped traffic over peering connections over the IXP. So um, I quickly want to, to mention those developments. This is from the, the graphs are from a website operated by a Belgian guy who's working for Cisco. I don't know how to pronounce, he's called Eric. And you see the, the allocations and uh, assignments from Afrinic have increased over the years since 2006 for Tanzania. On the next slide, you see what has been announced is also increasing very much. Um, of course, uh, sorry, these are statistics about IPv6 only. So I have. Um, included them also. So there is some IPv6 activity also going on. And what is alive really connected and really seeing traffic from IPv6 networks, there are um, 10 networks now, up from nine networks about two years ago. And the traffic uh, that Google sees from Tanzania has also um, seen variations and it went up to half a percent earlier from last year, mid last year, but now it's back down again and I'm not sure why that is. Um, so to, to come back to the infrastructure that we have in Tanzania, we have uh, data centers, but um, the main ones are the mentioned by Matugo, the National Internet Data Center that belongs to the government is and is operated, managed by TTCL. Then we have a data center that belongs to Tigo, the mobile operator, and another data center that belongs to Vodacom, as you know, also a mobile operator. So, and the, the last one, the NMB bank has one, but I'm not sure how, how active they are marketing this and, and how many customers they have for this. And, Apart from that last one, uh, you can see that there is none that is really carrier neutral. They might call themselves carrier neutral data center, but in my opinion, that doesn't make it true. Um, we have in, in Dar es Salaam especially, we have several providers who are rolling out metro fiber installations, uh, about four or five of them. And to list them all explicitly, what might cause, cause some trouble because I'm bound to miss somebody. So I, didn't put the names there. And for the um, more complicated fiber that is going between the cities across the country, we have the national ICT backbone um, that sells capacities to all the major cities and, and towns in Tanzania, and also has border crossings established to all the neighboring countries, I believe. Of course, the, the DRC has a border with us only in the lake, Tanganyika, so that's maybe not included. Um, so that would be a submarine fiber. <laughs> um, apart from that, there's one consortium of Airtel, Antigua, and Santa. They have uh, started establishing their own uh, fiber between uh, Arusha, Moshi, and Dar es Salaam, and I hope they are continuing to give us uh, resiliency. And Vodacom has a fiber since about 10 years ago that connects to Doma, to Morogo, to Dar es Salaam. And I had almost forgotten in the first uh, version of the slides, we also have submarine cables. There are three of them, a CCOM since 2009, as I mentioned, and Easy one year later in 2010, they got 
established connectivity, of course, um, mainly uh, these two other ones giving us um, international capacity links to the outside world, to Europe and also South Africa. And then the third one is the seas cable that connects uh, only point to point between Dar es Salaam and the Seychelles. And it's in the same landing station as easy. In terms of interconnections, I have to confess, I have to confess if you like it or not, there are no traffic graphs in this presentation. Some will like that. So um, Tanzania Internet Exchange is active since uh, 2004 and has, okay, 35 peers. Um, the website says 39 right now, but the 35 I counted yesterday manually that uh, distinct different entities uh, who are not brothers and sister companies. Um, the Arusha Internet Exchange was started working in 2006 with 14 peers now. In Mansa, we have uh, one that is uh, two years old and has 10 peers. And May of this year, we set up the one in Zanzibar and has three working peers, but several more in the process of connecting. And the Dodoma Internet Exchange uh, was in June this year. There is uh, some initiative uh, with the regulator and the government to increase the number of IXPs and um, peers at the IXPs. More about that later. So I want to mention a few things. That's, that, that's why I'm not um, representing anyone here. Um, and unfortunately, this is probably the least technical talk for today. Um, we have um, environmental factors that have something to do with the development of internet that um, play, yeah, play a role. Uh, and that uh, I think we can mention here. Since for about three years or so, we have an excess duty on communication services. So ISPs pay extra as if it was a luxury to, uh, to the tax collector for services, communication services rendered. So it's the same as tobacco or alcohol. If you want to enjoy stuff like this, you have to pay extra. Then we have the national ICT backbone, which is managed by TTCL, but still the uh, pricings are more expensive than elsewhere. And uh, some of us believe that a competition to that would improve uh, the choice and the resiliency uh, for everyone concerned. And then we have a new thing that um, some people have already mentioned on some fora, uh, per the regulations, all of the uh, licensees in Tanzania have to connect to an IXP. So instead of what we had before that anybody can choose out of their free will what they do, how they route their packets efficiently or inefficiently, right now everybody has to make a port available and connect to an IXP. And uh, when they uh, offer services in a region of Tanzania, outside Dar Islam or anywhere, they also have to connect to each of the IXPs that is the closest to where they provide the service. So if they provide the service everywhere, they would have to connect to all of the IXPs, which is good for the IXPs, but it's uh, very much a top-down forceful approach. Then there's also um, text in the same legislation, which is linked at the bottom, uh, that the IXPs have to be interconnected. So this is something that I just wanted to mention and we can maybe discuss without microphones. So um, one thing that is a little uh, a pet idea that I wanted to mention that can be better for cheap internet connectivity and uptake is something that I would call the gap because between Dar es Salaam and Mombasa, there, there is no fiber connection um, on land. So there are the two submarine cables, Seacom and Easy. But as some of you know, that's just for each of them, it's just a pair of fiber 
and what you can put on one pair of fiber is limited and you have to buy capacity from the cable operator and cannot light up yourself and increase the capacity yourself. So there's um, big content coming into Mombasa. Cloudflare is there, Google is there. Soon Facebook will be there and I'm sure there will be more. And there's also um, more choice in submarine um, capacity because of the Teams cable. But currently the packets, they get wet because they go through the water or they could go through Nairobi, which is the longer way. And of course, latency matters a bit. So there, there should be a shorter way and it would probably be feasible to create as um, a terrestrial fiber cable, which has not one pair of fiber, but maybe, you know, 48 strands or something, a higher count of fibers. And their operators could even get a dark fiber pair and light up their own capacity at, at higher uh, bandwidth and make use of all the interconnections that are available in Mombasa. There's a nice map that I stole from NSRC, the, from the website of African Terrestrial Fiber Map, uh, maintained by Steve Song. It, there you can, there you, there you can see between Mombasa and Dar es Salaam at the bottom of the picture, there's no fiber between across the border that is going the short way. This one is probably not used. That's Taveta Nemo there. And most traffic would go all the way this way or get wet by, by going, oh, by going uh, through the water. Um, okay, another thing. Okay, I'm not finished yet. I just wanted to mention as well that we want to improve Okay, uh, we, we still um, see in the traffic uh, at, for instance, TIX is a total of eight gigabits, out of which uh, six gigabits of traffic are local content, but foreign content. So I think it's local foreign content because it's under the control of those content providers like Google and Akamai. So six is coming from Google, thanks to Seacom sponsoring the Google cache and the connection and sharing of it via Tix. And another about one gigabit and more is from an Akamai cache. So out of the uh, eight gigabit, less than one would be really locally originated local traffic without those content providers. And I think this is something that uh, we can and we should improve on, have more applications, more email services, more um, things that can be done, hosted locally, hosted in any of the existing data centers or with the providers and uh, get more stuff, um, get more value created locally by ourselves. Um, thanks, that's all. Are there non-political questions? Uh, thank you, Frank. Um, and yes, I think uh, Nishal obviously. Um, hi, um, still Nishal. Uh, Frank, I've got a few questions for you, unless there's a line, and there isn't a line. So, uh, the first is you mentioned Dodoma as an exchange point. How many peers are there at Dodoma you neglected to mention? Three exchanging traffic actively, and obviously a lot more trying to connect because of that. Mm, I don't know why. Three. Three. Okay, thank you. Um, my next question. Still no line. Um, the cross-border fiber that you're talking about between um, Dar es Salaam and Mombasa, why does it not exist? Sorry, why? Why does it not exist? I mean, is it is it a case of regulation? It, that, it might be that, because I didn't put it there, but also you didn't put it there. So, so I don't my, know. I guess that's my question. My question is... It's also is, my question. Is it a case of regulation? Is it a case of... Uh, 
No business operator seeing potential? Is that uh, because there hasn't been a co-op between some Kenyan business and a Tanzanian business or something like that? Uh, and what you can answer for me is, is there a law that prohibits cross-border fiber between a, either a private organization or a co-op between the countries uh, that you're aware of? So first, um, I don't know why it doesn't exist. I haven't caught it up with enough people to get enough reasons why it doesn't exist. I don't know about a law that prevents anyone making it. I even think there's no law, there's no law preventing this. An interesting challenge would probably be getting the right of way along the roads. So, I mean, there's fiber in uh, Tanzania, there's fiber in Kenya. So the process for laying fiber is well understood. The process for getting rights of way and by way leaves and all of that is understood. Someone would have to do it. I I'm just curious whether it's a, a lack of business interest or a, a, a regulatory reason. I don't think it's because of regulations. I haven't talked enough to people about if, if there's lack of business interest. I believe the fiber that exists in Tanzania is only available for leasing capacities, not dark fiber pairs, which is better. And from the Kenyan side, I believe it's easier. So if you, you're saying, for example, as a foreign investor, that's me, by the way, uh, if I wanted to uh, lease or run fiber between Mombasa, I couldn't run my own. I'd, I'd have to lease fiber. You just mentioned something about the fiber in Tanzania. Yeah. So the fiber that belongs to the national ICT backbone, you can lease SDH capacities or 100 meg, which will be uh, Ethernet over SDH, or gigabit, which will be Ethernet over SDH, and nothing else, as far as I know, but I'm not the right authority. I wish an SDVP is anybody here? I believe. Unfortunately, not. Foreign investor with questions. There's a line, so I'm going to yes. pass it before yes, I get my next one. Yeah, thank you, Frank, for a very good presentation. Uh, it's curious to and interest to understand, as a matter of inter, uh, state of internet in Tanzania, what do you think we need to do at least to broad, uh, bandwidth to be affordable, especially in most of rural area. I, I know you, you have been in the industry for quite long and could be very of much of interest to, to get on what do you think we need to do at least bandwidth can be affordable in Tanzania. Okay. Um, I believe it's, you know, <laughs> I believe if there was more choice for national backhaul, it would not hurt. It would improve the service levels, the choice, and also the pricing that, and that for instance, ISPs like um, normal ISPs, and that, that they would face for creating connectivity to villages or to other places. So, it's, it's also then a chicken and egg problem a little bit. We need the infrastructure, but we also need the content as well. So infrastructure should be permitted to be built. And there are only rumors that there are obstacles. Um, I can't help Misha very much with that for an investor. Um, but then at the same time, I also uh, wish that we would have um, more content locally. Um, I have friends in South Africa who say that there are many neutral data centers, that there are many companies coming and hosting stuff locally. So stuff like this has to happen as well. So I hope we can get neutral data centers because um, I've talked uh, a month ago to people from Facebook and they would not 
put any equipment of theirs in any of our data centers because they are not really neutral. Not even one that belongs to a mobile operator that is allowing fiber to come into the data center, but you know you don't know about the future. Next week they might change that, so it's not neutral enough. Um, we can also chat offline about more ideas. I don't, can't think of anything else right now. Okay, one more question. Uh, okay, then then it's Nisha again, and then you can stand behind him. No, no, go go on now. One more. So one more question. Uh, I should acknowledge that we have been working very close, especially on the Dodoma Internet Exchange Point, where I'm also volunteering as the technical manager. And I also acknowledge the support from the government through the regulator of making internet exchange points operation in Tanzania. And we are aware that we have around six IXPs in Tanzania and few are working. And I also remember in the Nijal presentation, he mentioned the case of South Africa, where there are multiple IXP. Do you think maybe there are some of the mistakes we are making and we are not learning from the South African case, which is having more IXPs which are working, while Tanzania is struggling much to operationalize the remaining IXP in Tanzania. It's a good question, but both Michelle and I could now talk half an hour each. Um, Uh, as you mentioned, it's, it's right. Uh, we received a lot of support from the government to create these internet exchanges. Um, I've mentioned only five because Michelle would kill me if I mentioned one that has less than three people, uh, three peers connected. Um, and zero is a lot less than three. Um, I, I believe we have learned some things, but um, we, we have created internet exchanges um, with a lot of support from the government, uh, even in places where we didn't see the need ourselves. So the, the, the support is definitely there strongly. Um, but we have to um, find our own way to operationalize and to um, keep the, the running of the internet exchanges um, at a low cost, low overhead, so that we don't have to charge a lot of money for peers to connect. I would not wish to charge um, $500 per month for a peer to connect to an internet exchange and then they don't see the benefit from it. So to be frank, which I am, currently a lot of people are connecting to internet exchanges because there's an obligation. So and this is not something we have learned from South Africa, um, but it's, it's outside of our control as TISPA as the operator of the IXPs. I don't know if that answered your question, um, but maybe you can talk more as well. Um, did I forget a point from your, maybe after Nisha, I don't know how much time we have. Um, if I missed something, remind me please, okay, Nisha? If we have time, Mark. We, okay. So it's Nishal again. Uh, going back in time to the 2009 landing of CECOM, that must have been an event, uh, as I understand, no submarine fabric yet. Um, when the second cable landed, a short a few months later, as I understand, now you, be, yeah. you don't have to give me pricing, but did you see prices change or were they set around the same at the time? 
I don't, I don't need to know what you're paying. I just want to know if the potential extra route created any kind of competition on either of the provider side. You mean the change between one cable and two cables? Yes. I'm not aware okay. of a change. Probably after, it was about one year later, and between the, the, the second cable one year after the first one, between the July 2009 and June, July 2010, I guess even the prices on Seacom itself had gone down because every price is going down. And maybe the new cable easy was hitting approximately at the same rate. So I didn't see a sharp decline because of the second, but I do a lot more BGP than I do stuff with dollars. Disclaimer. Okay, I'm, I'm an economist, so I tend to think that they're aligned, but that's just me. Um, uh, my final question, because we are running out of time, um, are there any other submarine fiber cables that you know that you can land here? And I'm not talking about seas, which as I understand, just goes to say shells. Talking about cables that connect you to well, the rest of either Africa or the rest of the global internet. You mean for the future? Yeah, I the believe there years. are. I believe there are, but I'm not sure enough to promise you anything, okay. dear foreign investor. Please come to the mic, yes, Nyango. Hello? Okay, Frank. I know you can hear me very well, even without this. Okay, my name is Nyango Mege. I'm CTO for Ra Limited. Uh, part of Liquid Telecom. Okay, I just wanted to update actually. That's why I didn't want not want to come here. I know there was a question on why the fiber has not been built uh, coming from uh, Tanga to the border. It's already been built. That border point is known as Horohoro on Tanzania side and Lunga Lunga on Kenya side. The fiber is already on the border. Thank you. Thank you very much. That makes one happy Frank. If it's if it's still being built, then it's not operational. The fiber has to be built first, then it's operational. It's yeah. already there on the border. Somebody from Kenya should come and connect from that side. Thank you. Sorry, Rango. Did you mean the MICTPP fiber or another fiber that allows me to rent a dark pair of fiber? It is the MICTPP. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. That was quite nice and lively. I suppose my only question to Frank, which you can have during dinner, perhaps, is uh, how it's going with forcing everyone to use the TZ. But we'll talk about that tonight. 